In this video, we will try to understand the error that you have when trying to delete some users. So back in the browser, let's take a closer look at the error message. First, there is an error executing the database query. So this comes from the database, not from the ColdFusion server. Apparently, there is a violation of a foreign key constraint. We will try to see what that means. But first, the good news, the statement has been rolled back, so your data is safe. The delete operation that caused the error did not take place. No data has been deleted from the database. Now, let's try to understand that foreign key constraint violation. So to do that, let's return to ColdFusion Builder, and I will take a look at the users table of my database. The user that you are trying to delete is this one, so the ID number of that user is two. You are trying to delete user number two. Now let's take a look at the events table. Because in the events table, you see that this user, user number two, is the author of one event. And you see that here in the events table, there is a field, FLD event author, that is a foreign key to the users table. So there is a relationship between the events and the users table. And to guarantee the integrity of that relationship, the users that you reference in the events table must always exist in the users table. And here what you are trying to do is to delete that user from the users table, and that would break the relationship between the events and the users table on that particular event. So this is the explanation of that foreign key violation. Now, how to deal with that? Well, let's return to the user service.cfc component. Because if we cannot delete a user, we have a plan B. And plan B is deactivate user. Instead of deleting the user, we will simply set the user is active to zero, and that would effectively remove the user from the active users of the site. It would also remove the access of the user to the profile and to the site administration, but it would not actually delete the user from the database, thus guaranteeing the integrity of that relationship. Okay, so let's return to the users.cfm file because this is where I try to delete the user. Now you know that in some cases, this line of code will generate an error. So we will ask ColdFusion to try that using a CF try tag that I will open and close. And in the body of the CF try tag, I ask ColdFusion to try this. Now, if this operation succeeds, then everything is fine and the user is deleted. If it generates an error, the CF try will catch the error and I can use in the CF try tag a CF catch tag block here to handle the error that is catched by the CF try. Now, if I go to the CF catch tag here and I can see there is a type attribute to that tag, you see that the CF catch is able to handle different types of error. In my case, I will limit the action of that CF catch to the database errors. So you could have many different CF catches in the same CF try block to handle the different kinds of errors, the different types of errors that can occur. In my case, I just want to catch the database errors. And if this statement here produces a database error. Instead of showing that error message that you have seen in the browser, I will try something else. I will try plan B. And plan B is another CF set statement. And I will go to application dot user service. And instead of deleting the user, I will deactivate the user. And I will deactivate the same user as the one that I'm trying to delete, url.delete, like that. OK, so let's save that users.cfm file, and I will browse the file again, and I will try to delete the same user again. So I try to delete. Now I confirm my intention to delete that user, and you see that it has worked as expected. Now let's return to ColdFusion Builder to see 
if that user has been deleted or not. And you can see that user number two is still there, but it has been deactivated. You see the zero here. So this try catch methodology is your first step toward error handling and confusion. Instead of showing an error message, we try something else. We handle the error. Now, error handling is a much wider topic than the sole example of this video, but this goes way beyond the scope of this course. For now, you will use the next and last PDF file of the course. The name of that file is now displayed on the screen to build the home page of the administration section of your application. And this will be the final step in building your dynamic website.